We are live again. Am so, I live? You are. Am I yeah. live? Am I live is back with another episode, and this is where we, for anybody joining us for the first time, this is where we talk about how to make your nutrition and fitness goals sustainable, realistic, and achievable. We have animals that join us all the time uh, for our lives. Brett will have a dog in there in a little bit, I'm sure. So oh, I, sure. Uh, I am Jay Voith, and with me as always is Dr. Bradley P. Dieter, PhD extraordinaire. Uh, if you have any questions while we're going, while we're talking today, just ask away, and we will get to all of them while we are uh, going through our show. We can't promise we have the right answers, but we can promise we have some answers. Some answers, yeah. They might not even be relevant, but they will definitely be answers. That's true. So let's jump into our first topic today, and that is fructose. Fructose. Is it actually bad? So, Brad, I know this is a, uh, a topic that you have written about pretty extensively. Um, yes. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's first cover the, the myth of, cause this, this was one that when I first heard it, I was like, there's, I, I didn't even understand fruit is bad for you. I never, I, I just don't even understand where, where it came from. So is, have you heard any, what, what is the, what are the myths you have heard revolving around fruit being not good for you? Well, I think, so there's quite a few reasons this myth has popped up one is people have this assumption that fructose the sugar in fruit is bad for you it causes insulin resistance um you know it causes obesity uh it like changes stuff in your brain that makes you want to eat more yada 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 so that's one reason um and we can dive into some of that stuff um in a little bit and then the other reason is there was kind of this theory that floated around Do you remember when like paleo was super popular mm -hmm. And like everything had this like evolutionary perspective of, of food. And there was this idea of like, hey, you know, fruit ripens, most fruit ripens in the fall. And so you want to get fat before winter. So the reason fruit is so sweet and it would make you fat is because you'd eat it in the fall and you'd get fat for winter. Like that was another one of those ideas that like popped up. Mm -hmm. So that's where those myths came from. Okay. So like the article on T Nation that says the evils of fructose is is just kind of bullshit. Yeah, I mean that's really all I have to say about that. Yeah, well, you called it out in another article on ours, so I, I did. I'd bring it out. Yeah, that's a uh how, I I don't even under how this person what's this person's PhD in, do you know? Um I don't know. I but I, look. I mean I just don't get it. Okay. So, yeah. so let's, let's, let's start out with, let's, let's go through some of the issues. Actually, I'm just going to go through this article and kind of post things. So fructose does, um, do, does fructose make you fat? Um, no. So does, well, what in, in, an, in a Western diet, what would you say is the number one, number one source of fructose? Uh, the number one source of fructose is sugar sweetened beverages. So things like uh, soda or yeah. pop, whatever part of the country you're from. Pop. It's pop. Let's let's um, energy drinks, uh, coffee, so um, high juices. So like is, is it high fructose? Is high fructose corn syrup the number one source where people get it from? Uh, yes. Or okay. it? Now the thing oh. that I think. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Let's say the thing that I think people get all, all up in arms about is like high fructose corn syrup is almost the exact same as regular sugar. Like table sugar is 50, 50, uh, glucose and fructose. Yeah. High fructose corn syrup is 45, 55. Right. And that, that extra 5% of fructose makes it like, it's easier to go into solution. So yeah. It's not as grainy. Um, and it's much easier to just make it liquid. And then it makes it a little bit sweeter. So fructose is a little bit sweeter than regular sugar. So high fructose corn syrup is really only 5% different than table sugar. Well, it's, I mean, technically you could say it's 10% because it's five plus and five minus, but yeah, I mean, really it's, yeah, it's it only has 5% more. 
Well, it has 10% more, I guess. Yeah, 5%, no, 10% then, okay. It, it has 5% more fructose than regular than sugar. Than regular sugar, yeah. That it has 5% less glucose right. than regular sugar. So there's so, like a 10% swing of okay. sugar concentrations. Yeah, I, that is actually, I did not actually know that about high fructose corn syrup. That is like the most, I, I don't know, my mind's kind of blown that that's all it is and that people make it demonize it like that. That's kind of Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, but no, that doesn't mean like, just because it's that little of a difference doesn't mean that it, you know, couldn't be horrible. I mean, it could be, right? Right. Like you can have very minor changes in molecules or solutions that make them either fine or will kill you, right? Like, yeah. So, so that's that in and of itself isn't a great argument, but um, it's really not that much different when you think about it. Yeah. So, why does, uh, um, why do people say that fructose makes you fat? Like, what's the, what's the, what's the myth there? What, where, the, what data are they? Like fructose is what's making you fat. Well, there's kind of a few pieces. One is if you kind of look at the nutrition literature across the broad spectrum, and you kind of look at okay, people who are obese or carry more body fat or have a higher BMI or however you want to you know label that, they generally have much higher intakes of fructose from sugar sweetened beverages than people who are not obese right mm -hmm. so it's kind of like a, okay high fructose intake from sugar sweetened beverages is associated with obesity um right. so that's that's one of them um the other one is there's kind of this idea that your body processes fructose differently than regular glucose mm -hmm. right um, and generally speaking, only your liver can metabolize fructose. Mm -hmm. Just has to do with enzymes. You have normal glucose metabolism. You have a hexokinase that can only use a hexose, which is glucose. Your liver can process fructose, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah. Bunch of jargon. That doesn't matter. But so people have this assumption of, okay, if all this fructose goes to my liver, then it can't really process it. It's just going to turn it into fat, and then you're going to store it as more fat. So that's – another one of the arguments um and then for some reason there's been this idea that higher fructose intake causes more insulin resistance so those are kind of the three big ones so will you store extra fructose as fat if you're in a calorie deficit no okay so if you're in a calorie deficit extra fructose will not if you're in a calorie deficit your calories your macros are all in balance having a high fructose diet will not hinder weight loss uh not to any appreciable degree okay and there may even be some rationale to why you might actually see more weight loss okay um one being like calories controlled you probably extract a little bit less energy from fructose um, because you do have to metabolize and process it mm -hmm. um <clears throat> You probably, if you're consuming that much fructose, you probably are going to have some GI issues, so you're not going to be absorbing as much food. Mm -hmm. um, so those are those are some of the big ones. Okay. Um, so now, oh, now, go ahead. Oh, sorry. So, go ahead. Say what you were going to. I had another. Um, I was going to say it kind of depends on a little bit. Like if you're just mainlining Mountain Dew, um, <laughs> you probably have some other behaviors that are going on that are going to cause you to maybe gain right. weight. And, and that relates to my next question and that, uh, my next statement question, whatever you want to call it. And that's, it, it seems like there's more of a correlation between fructose and high fructose intake and obesity versus a causation effect, right? Yeah. So that's one of the big problems when we look at some of the like big epidemiological data is generally speaking, like, yes, the people who are obese tend to consume more high fructose corn syrup or whatever. But they also are more likely to smoke. They're more likely to drink. They're more likely um, to, to have to be sedentary. They're more likely to have to consume more calories overall. Um, consume a generally less healthy diet. They're yeah. more likely to take, you know, abuse drugs. So like all those behavioral components um, that you can like try to control for statistically, but that doesn't really mean it solves that problem. Right. <clears throat> Is there, oh, and maybe there has been a study done, I, I have no idea. It'd be interesting to see the um, obesity versus impulse control. Like, yeah. are take riskier behaviors more prone 
to obesity. And I can, I just like off the top of my head, just me observing no actual data, like just from growing up in firehouses and being a fireman for a long time, the, there, there's two types of firemen. There are the fit jacked guys. And then there are the big, huge guys. And most of them are the big, huge guys. It's very rare to see big jacked firemen anymore. That's why they're in calendars. Um, but it, it, it's true. And if you look at like the CFD, the Chicago fire department calendar, there's only like two or three guys that are absolutely jacked. The rest of them are just in like average, average shape. Um, and I think it's like, like looking at the, 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 the guys who used to be like balls to the wall, like the, the badass of the badass firemen, the big risk takers. Now that they're getting older, they're not as active. They still take those risks but they don't train as much and they're not as active and they're really overweight. Whereas the younger guys who take a lot of the risks, the, the, the younger guys who are jacked, who take a lot of risk are really lean, are, are, are lean. Um, and they're starting to get bigger as they get older. Cause they're still, they still that risk, like that, that, that risk personality, but they're just not active as they were. Yeah. That's a good question. I don't think I know the answer to that, but what's, I do remember and I recall this from a couple of years ago, is one of the things that's really interesting is people kind of have this idea of like willpower and self-control mm -hmm. um, being like one of the big things that prevents people from becoming obese or having success dieting. And that appears to not be the case. Like hmm. willpower doesn't really appear to be a primary explanatory variable for why somebody loses weight or doesn't lose weight, which is really interesting. Like it's not a willpower thing that's really driving most of why people lose weight or don't lose weight. So when yeah. you just say, well, you just need to try harder. It's like, well, I mean, that's kind of true, but that doesn't really actually address the, yeah, the variable. Issue. Yeah. I'm just reading through this teen nation article and, and they said to stay, we're going to move on from this topic in a second and give our final answer. Fructose is bad, but um, they say, stay away from these from out, except for occasionally stay away from these, uh, these fruits, apple, banana, cherries, grapes, mangoes, melons, orange, pears, pineapple and watermelon what yeah this is i mean this is on the link on the uh this is an article you I don't know, but that's just asinine so yeah. <laughs> the thing is like, like <laughs> we've done and by we i mean the science community has done decades of research on this right and we know like how much can you consume of fructose before bad things happen and that number is almost three times the average daily intake right yeah. so you can consume up to about really i mean most papers show about a hundred grams a day before you start to have some negative health effects. It's probably closer to like 150 before you notice like substantial health effects. And the average intake I think is like 50. I think I have it in this article. Like the average intake is like 54 grams a day. Now teenagers are horrible. They're eating like if you look at the worst eating habits of anybody, it's always teenagers. Um, and they're but they're at like seventy three grams a day. So even that is, you know, still not at that kind of danger zone level. Yeah, I'm looking at this person. They have a, a registered, um, registered dietitian and a PhD, a, a PhD in kinesiology, and a professor of human performance at a college and they wrote an article saying stay away from literally that says stay away from apples because they will make you yeah fat. i mean this was published in 2008 so i would now you've you've written for teenation correct yes could you would if you wrote teenation and said remove this would they um i don't know i think i would probably email the author first and be like hey saw this you know it's been 12 years you know have, has any of the new data changed your mind yeah yeah, that'd be interesting. I mean, I don't know if I had something out there like that. I'd at least email them and say, hey, can I update this? Like, yeah. Like that's a, that's a very popular, I just Googled it and it's the number one, number one thing that comes up for like eight terms. So let's end this. Is first, is let's just, are, what are their health benefits to fructose? Uh, there are some. So <laughs> I thought you were done with your statement. I thought that was it. I was like, oh, okay. And uh, I think it was like probably the mid to late 90s, they did a bunch of research on fructose and people with diabetes. Um, so what's interesting is fructose does not trigger an insulin response. Okay. Right. So you can consume sweet things without having a big insulin response. So for people with diabetes, they thought, oh, okay, maybe this is something we can do. Yeah. It also doesn't spike blood sugar nearly as high. So 
It does spike it though, a little bit though, correct? Yes, but it's not nearly as much as glucose. Okay. So there are like some instances where you can be like, okay, let's, you know, let's say you're on like a moderate carb diet and you're trying to lose weight and you have type two and it's like, okay, well, let's maybe get a little more of your carbohydrates from fruit and fructose just to kind of lower the total insulin load on your body for a while. Like mm -hmm. that could be a health benefit. Um, the other one is generally if you're consuming fructose from fruit, you're getting a lot of other like fiber polyphenols, um, you know, some of those other, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, kind of bioactive compounds from fruit. Yeah. And then, so the bottom line is fruit bad for you? Uh, no. And will fruit hinder weight loss? It will not. Gosh, wait, freaking front door. Hold on one second. Oh man, I will take over, Brad. Don't worry. Don't you okay. worry. All right. Well, while Brad, while Brad's doing doing stuff, uh, we will move on to our next. Well, first we'll give a plug for coaching since Brad. Hey, Mike. Oh, what an unresponsible guy. So. If anybody's looking for more information on this, you can go right to NutraWiki. Let me pull up that uh, that link. You can go to NutraWiki.org. There is an article. It's under uh, carbohydrates, or you can just search right there for fructose, and you will find Brad's article. It's a really, really good article. It's probably one of the longer ones on NutraWiki, a lot of data in there, a um, couple articles on, on both, showing you both sides. Um, and then if you're like, wow, this is really good information, where can, I where can somebody teach me this? You can go right to macrosinc.net and sign up for coaching. And that will, uh, we have a two week free trial. It's right there on the bottom. And we can get you all signed up for coaching. And Brad is back. So we'll add Brad back in. Oops, I just removed him. Oh, you're back. Oh, too many crickets. It's one of those days, Jay. Is your butler off and just couldn't get the, uh, the door? No, it's the landscaping people. They're supposed to come yesterday to fix my sprinklers so my new lawn doesn't die. And they didn't come till right now. Uh huh. Uh, so. you gave your butler the day off. Yeah, I just did our co our plug for coaching. So let's, yes. let's jump into our next topic. And it's like, again, another neutral wiki article. And this is fasted training. So does that mean that you train fast or you train slow? <laughs> that means that you train faster than you did yesterday. That's good. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So fasted training. So the theory, fasted training is training when you are in an unfed state. So typically it's early in the morning. Um, and the theory behind it is that you don't have any food in your system. So your body is going to use your stored fat uh, as energy and you'll, you'll lose more body fat. Um, so first let's cover that right there, Brad. If I don't have, if I haven't eaten anything and I go, go work out, where is my body pulling energy from to fuel my workout? Um, everywhere. I mean, I mean, is it pulling from body fat though? Yes. Yeah, more than if I'm in a fed state. Um, yes. Okay, perfect. And I, and I know you wanted to go further, but you know where I'm going with this. So it does. It does. You in that instance, you oxidize more fat for fuel. However, what happens is soon at, when I go home and eat. A, a full meal through if I eat my 2000 calorie meal throughout the day, what happens to the fat that I consume throughout my day? Goes, it's either utilized or goes back into storage. It, right. So, so is there any evidence that training fasted in a 24 hour period provides, yeah, that's my clock in a 24 hour period provides more fat loss, more body fat loss, than training in a fed state. We do not have any evidence to support that idea at this point. Okay. Now, part of the problem with that research is it's very hard to prove a negative, right? So if you have a negative result, like let's say, you know, there's a study that's referenced all the time um, and I reference it myself as, as a piece of evidence. It's like, hey, we see no difference between these two, which means there is no difference, right? Mm -hmm. Science doesn't really work very well that way. Um, so it, there could be a very minor effect, but it is just that. It would be very minor. So it may be there, but it's probably so imperceptible that it doesn't really matter. It's kind of like, you know, if you have, if you're consuming 100 grams of protein a day and you increase that to 120, 
you have a greater thermic effect of food of like four calories. It's like, okay, that's great. Maybe that does improve fat loss, but that's so minor. It doesn't really matter. Right. Yeah. And, and one of the examples, and I'm, I, I can't find my document on it, the example that I used to, cause I, cause I get why people think it does. I get where the, I get where the myth came from, where people are, you know, you're oxidizing more fat. So I'm not gonna, I'm losing more, but you know, if, if I, and I know a lot of people do this and I think they're great. Like a checking account, a bank account is one of the best examples I think for a lot of nutrition stuff, because it's, it's a relatable number example people can do. If I wake up in the morning and I have $0 in my checking account and I have 2000 in my savings account, I transfer over five hundred dollars to cover my bills to my checking. Okay, and then I have fifteen hundred savings. So then, when I get paid by the end of the day, I have two thousand dollars added in, and I spent it all. I have five hundred remaining that I transfer my savings, so it goes right back into my savings to zero out. Does that yeah, make it sense? It does. Use days and should use weeks, but it makes sense. The you know, you're, you're, I want to make two thousand dollars a day. Yeah, me too. That'd be nice. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take a, I'll take a, a slight pay raise. That'd be. <laughs> that would be what? Six hundred. No. That would be seven hundred and thirty thousand a yeah. year. Yeah, six three hundred sixty-five times two. Yeah. We gotta sell a lot more t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Which, speaking of the merch store, macrozinc.net slash shop. <laughs> we're, we're plugging that now. We're just, we, I don't know. <laughs> we, we skipped going over fat. <laughs> so is there any benefit to fasted training? Yeah. You know, one of the things there's, there are some benefits. Um, you know, one is learning to train in a fasted state can be very beneficial because there may be times you need to compete or perform or whatever in a fasted state. Um, some people just feel better when they train in a fasted state and that's totally okay. Um, those are kind of the two big benefits. Yeah, I prefer to train in a fasted state. If I if I train in the morning, and if I if I'm if I'm not training at night, um, I prefer. And if I train at night, I actually like to have like a, a relatively good sized meal before I train. I'm weird like that. But in the morning, I can't eat. I, I have to get up and work out, not fasted, and then I'm fine. And even after, um, I find that because I'm fat, I'm still in a fasted state. I, I find it hard to even like eat a meal afterwards or, or get a protein shake down because I just, I'm not in the mood at that point. But after I, if I'm in a fed state and I train, I just crave food afterwards. Yeah. I'm pretty similar. Yeah. Yeah. So, so fast training, would you recommend it as a tool for weight loss? Um, it can definitely be a tool, right? So it's like one of the ways that you, if you train fast at first thing in the morning and then you're not eating breakfast until nine or nine thirty. It's a kind of a good way to delay calorie intake. Um, mm -hmm. If there is a tiny benefit, you may be getting it. But sorry, sorry. Let me let me reclarify my question because I, I agree with you. Let me. Do you agree with fasted training as a at direct fasted training? The results from fasted training as a weight as a fat loss solution. No, no. But do you agree with it being a hunger management tool like every like like intermittent fasting? Yeah. 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 Perfect. We uh, do have a question on this. Oh, we have. Oh, we have a couple. I missed. I am sorry, guys. Uh, first, there that fructose. That there fructose, fruit evil. I did have two oranges today. Coming through it, they did seem a little sketchy. I mean, oranges are pretty evil. Uh, Kristen said, "Am I running in a fasted state if I drink coffee or eat the goo. GU gels? The goo gels? Oh, the the the, the jelly gels? Um, oops, wrong button. Sorry." If, technically, if you're if you've consumed coffee, you probably are still in a fasted state because you haven't really had very enough calories to kind of kick off a lot of the the fed mechanisms, so to speak. Um, now, if you're drinking like a double mocha whip of frappuccino, then you're definitely in a fed state. Um, if you eat a goo gel, you are technically in a fed state, um, but you're probably utilizing that so quickly that you're not really in like a true fed state. Um, so it's kind of like an in-between state. Yeah. No, she's not trying to train in a fasted state just doesn't like bringing a full state. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's a preference thing, right? It's, you're not hindering progress. You're not advancing it. You're, you're, you're just still making progress by training in a fasted state. It's a, a tool to help you. You're doing you boo. You're doing you boo. Uh, Brad, 
if I trained in my fastest state all day and then I came home, let's say I, let's say I fasted, I did some IF and I didn't eat. I didn't. And then I went to the gym at like 4 PM. IF. Got home 6 PM, man, I'm ridiculously hungry. I don't have time to prepare meals. What's a good idea for me? Ooh, I would probably go to motherofmacros.com and yeah. I would probably sign up for the like full meal deal package um, and have all of your meals prepped and delivered to your door. All you have to do is go down there, motherofmacros.com, <clears throat> all the options in the menu that you want and use macros 10 at checkout to save 10%. Um, I have now had three meals. They've all been very delicious. They have all cumulatively to prepare them all, all three meals. It's taken me nine minutes. Ooh. And nine of those minutes have been in the microwave. So perfect. Okay, probably add another like 30 seconds for me taking it out and like poking the top and putting it in the microwave. <laughs> And I've been doing videos about them. I know. So people, I saw people, people, like an hour ago. I know people can uh, get my ratings. Um, so far, we've been between the seven and a half and eight and a half range. Um, <laughs> I'm excited for the. I have a tzatziki salmon left and an artichoke chicken, and I have a donut. I gotta do. You're so. a tzatziki sal salad. I am tzatziki. All right, let's go over the last one, and this has a poll in it, and I'm gonna give a prize away. Ooh, are we doing prizes? Am I eligible? Can I win something? What am I going to win? You win virtual hugs from me. Oh, that's, can I just send you the care emoji? You win the honor of being the only desk beside the only picture in my house besides my wife. <laughs> <laughs> the only other pictures is me and you in my house. Well, I have I do have one of the entire Macros Inc. team, but you're in it. Oh, um, the God. literally the only picture on my desk. The only picture. <laughs> On my, I had to break things. This is the only picture on my desk. Oh, that's so cute. Um, but the only picture of a person besides family is is you. But that's, is that because I was you were photoshopped into it? No, it's because your family. The one of me. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's 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 not over my bed anymore. It was. There's a picture. Oh. Of, somebody photoshopped a picture of Brad with his arms around his wife, and it's if somebody photoshopped me into it, and his arms were around me, and it was over my bed. Um, for a, for a long time, a real long time. I had a, I had a cleaning lady at the time and she came oh. in and <laughs> I, I, I was single and I had a cleaning lady come in and she kept, she would always call me. She like one day she, she came over and uh, the cleaning lady was here and Lisa was, Lisa had just gotten here and we were going out and we got in Lisa's car and she goes, Miss oh. she's, like, she's like, I thought, she goes, can I ask you something? I'm like, yeah. She goes, is this your girlfriend? I'm like, yeah. She goes, I thought you were gay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I go, I go, oh, oh okay, but can, I, I don't, I don't care, but, but why? And she goes, the picture of you and the man upstairs. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I mean, whoever, I can't remember who photoshopped it. I have it written down in my notes. Oh, that's with so your, or, but If you have not seen that, it's, it was my profile picture for a long time. It's a very good Photoshop job. That's very good. Yeah. I have just, I just connected him. <laughs> I, I work here and I don't know what's we going on. We don't know either. So uh, I missed the beginning of this. Uh, I always have told you should have protein with an hour of working out to avoid muscle loss. Is this true, Brad? Uh, no. No. It won't hurt, but you don't have to be that close. <laughs> so as you're long as you're within a couple hours or even like four hours, you're probably okay. <laughs> yeah. So your muscles will not fall off. No. Well, they might, but not from that. Not from that. Okay. So let's get, so here's, here's our last topic. Our last topic is the best energy drinks. And this is, we're going to talk about different like things. In them, but what I want everybody to do is post in the comments, your favorite energy drink and whoever the first person that, and, and I don't, don't list like 80 of them. You get one guess. The first person's guess that is my favorite energy drink gets a free shirt. Not this shirt. This is an old school shirt. We don't make these anymore. You get one of the new ones. I think you should ship that exact shirt to somebody. You should sign it and say, my orange I, get. Here, I will write. <coughs> I wrote it down right now, so I can't change it. Should we, uh, 
answer uh, this person's question. <laughs> <laughs> that is my energy drink if I had to. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Red Bull and vodka up in my hand. All right. So, Brad, so let's start with this energy drinks. Yes. And and we're we're gonna go everything, we're gonna go moderation. We're we're not taking anything to extreme. We're going with like one one a day, maybe two a day. Um and, and normal size, the normal size like monster cans is a and I guys I didn't say brand, I said flavor and everything. You guys gotta get it, get it all. Details, uh, people. Details. details. Yeah. Um what is our energy drink safe in a normal moderation, like two a day, one or two a day? Yes, but I would maybe think about giving a couple days break every once in a while. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, let's say I if I have two cups of two, and we'll just go regular coffee from Starbucks, which has a, a large. I think a large coffee has two hundred and seventy milligrams of caffeine, or three hundred and twenty now. No, a, like a sixteen ounce Starbucks, which is pretty strong, is like maybe one hundred and fifty. Mm. Yeah. Is it Dunkin' Donuts then? One of them has an absolute higher. Look that up. So, but okay, so let's just go. If I have an energy drink five days a week, and okay. is that is that is that relative is that safe? Um yes, if you're having one. One a day. Okay. What are the downsides to having my my one energy drink a day? What are the, the health side effects? Um, of just the caffeine of, of the energy drink itself. Um, I mean, we'll, you we'll know, standard energy drinks like Red Bull, Monster, Rockstar. Uh, we can even throw Bang in there if we want. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you continually to habitually have the same thing for extended periods of time, you kind of run the risk of having some sort of nutrient imbalance or toxicity of something <laughs> building up over time. Yeah. So a lot of times these energy drinks will have you know some really interesting ingredients in them and some of them are like fat soluble so they'll store up in your tissue so that's why i tell people like switch up the energy drink brand or maybe take a couple weeks off every once in a while or kind of you know work through that kind of stuff switch up the brands really yeah because it's like let's say you're getting a ton of taurine in one and another one has a ton of uh Little creatine in it. It's like, well, yeah. at least you're not getting just the same thing all the time. Yeah. I do have the coffees and caffeine. How much? Uh, so a star you, mean, you mean caffeine and coffees? What did I say? Coffee. Caffeine. You said coffees and caffeine. Oh, I think I said coffees and caffeine. Oh, you know. well, I'm taking it as you said it backwards. So <laughs> you you are correct in that Dunkin' Donuts has the highest coffee, but that is a coffee with an espresso shot in it. Really? Yes. So a Starbucks, um, like regular coffee is, what the heck is this? Like a latte from Starbucks, which is an espresso is 150. Um, yeah. So you're looking at somewhere between like 125 and 200 for like a regular cup of coffee. Now, if you get like the blonde roast, you're looking at like 360 um, okay. Starbucks Pike Place Roast, which is kind of their high, most highly caffeinated. And a 16 ounce, which is like two cups of coffee, yeah. is 310. So, yeah, you're really looking at like 150 ish. Well, so, so, but, but come on, if we're ordering a 16, who's drinking half in saying? So, per, per sold. Dude, I'm drinking like four of those. Right. So, per, per sold serving, it's like 320. Yeah, it's like 300, yeah. 300. So, I right. so I was right. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. Because that's what I meant. I meant per, per like, I didn't mean like a cup of measure. I meant like cup you hold in your hand. Oh. Yeah, sorry. My, my my clarification. Sorry, I forgot you're a scientist and I have to speak literal. I only believe in science. So, so is there, uh, what about the cardiac implications? So first, let's <laughs> drinks are recommended by the ISSN. Not recommended, but they are a... a, a is it a yeah, yeah. I mean, they they do say that they are a performance enhancing supplement. That they, yeah, caffeine. Yeah. So, uh, what are the what are the cardiac side effects? Um, if you have established cardiovascular problems, I would check with your doctor about your caffeine intake. Mm -hmm. um, sustained high intakes of caffeine over longer periods of time can lead to some cardiac abnormalities. 
generally arrhythmias. Like a pillow. Um, so, so, and that's where I kind of wanted you to go. So throwing PVCs with them. So if you can have a premature ventricular contraction with them, yeah. um, you can get that when you cough though. Um, it's <coughs> exactly. Yeah. And you, I mean, you do get them with coffee. There was a study done. The AHA did a study um, on PVCs and caffeine intake and they found, I don't remember. I don't remember what, if they used energy drinks or there was a different study they did with energy drinks, but they had the exact, like the equivalent caffeine equivalency uh, between coffee, caffeine and coffee and energy drinks. They found the same number of PVCs. The problem was the, when they found drinks that had like extreme amounts of taurine in it. And uh, what's the other additive they put in there? I think it starts with a G. Ginseng. Ginseng. When they had a lot high amounts of ginseng, ginseng. and taurine, people go into runs of PVC for like three or four PVCs in a row. I thought you were going to say them to run, but I was going to laugh. Yeah, they, they'd go into running. So, so yeah, I mean, there are obviously some cardiovascular issues. If you have underlying ones, it becomes a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any, any, any benefits to having it to energy drinks? I mean, yeah, caffeine has some benefits, right? We do know there's some cognitive benefits, uh, like, you know, small doses of caffeine. We do know over time there's some benefits. Um, there's performance benefits. There's, uh, those, yeah, those are kind of the big ones. So and neurocognitive and physical performance. Now what's interesting is your body, you kind of, your body processes caffeine and I just kind of, put say it's in two compartments in your brain and the rest of your body. Um, mm -hmm. you, your kind of central nervous system where your brain will habituate to it. So that kind of like, you know how coffee makes you feel more alert. Mm -hmm. You will habituate to that. So eventually you'll, you'll need more caffeine to just like feel normal. Yeah, now, and, and that was my next question too. Yeah. Um, but your, the rest of your body, does not appear to habituate. So like the performance benefits, you don't really appear to habituate. Just the alertness. Yeah. Is there a paradoxical effect at some point? What do you mean? Like well, much in it. If I have either too much caffeine in one sitting or I build up such a, a tolerance to it that it's going to make me tired. Um, That's a good question. I don't know about like if you build up so much of a tolerance that you're tired. I would imagine if you, rely on caffeine all the time and then when you don't have it you probably feel more tired than you tired way. so real quick nobody has gotten my favorite energy drink yet so guys keep guessing people, Is it? some people have gotten really close like really close and i was like oh almost and not there um and then i guess my 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 follow-up question to what you just said is what's let's say i i mean and I, and i do i drink a high amount of energy drinks but i go through phases like i'll go through uh, like a two week span where I'm drinking two a day, occasionally three. And then I'll go a week where I have like two the whole week. Um, what is the, Oh, we have a winner. Party like a rock. I think Rachel. somebody said that above. Didn't oh, Rachel said rock star, original rock star, and then sugar free rock star. And is sugar free rock star your favorite. Sugar free. Right. Yeah. I, I wrote it down right, right there. Oh, somebody said sugar free Red Bull above. Uh, Red Bull, sugar free Red Bull is really good. It's just not my, uh, not my favorite. So Rachel, how do we get you a shirt? Rachel, send me an email, J A Y at macrosinc.net and we'll get you all set up. J A Y at macrosinc.net. Um, if I don't hear from y'all, if I don't hear, have an email when we're done, I'll, I'll message you on Facebook. Um, Somebody did ask a question. Yeah. And that's, and, and, and that actually, uh, Tyron actually has uh, my question. So, uh, is there a way to reset? If you take a caffeine break, will it, Will it affect uh, cognit cognitively <laughs> again when you drink? And how long of a break would you would you take? Yeah, and that was my question. What's the washout period for caffeine? I I think it varies quite a bit person to person. It also varies based on your genetics. So that's one of the interesting things about nutrigenomics is it's largely a crock of crap. Oh no 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 right no I can buy a limitless pill. Except for a few interesting things, and caffeine is one of them. So we do know that there's genetic there's genetic alleles that are different between people that affect your caffeine metabolism. And mm -hmm. some people are fast metabolizers and some people are slow metabolizers. Um so it depends a little bit on that. But I think it's you know, a couple days to a couple weeks of you know having a caffeine break and you kind of reset that cognitive kind of alertness, drowsiness, habituation cycle. There's a few ways you can do it. You can just go cold turkey. Um, generally that gives people pretty bad headaches. Um, I know I probably about once a year, 
Um, I just like take a week or two off caffeine and just like kind of reset my system and mm-hmm. I get the worst headaches for like a week. It just sucks, but I do it. Um, the other option is you can kind of slowly titrate your dose down. So you can like, you know, start by like mixing in 25% of your coffee grounds with decaf and slowly switch it to decaf for a couple of weeks. And then you can go back to fully leaded. Um, but those are some of the options. I really wish they made a caffeine free, like monster or like original monster caffeine free Red Bull or a caffeine free Rockstar. I really like the taste of like the actual energy drinks like Red Bull, Rockstar and the original monster. Yeah. I really, but, but like, I would just drink them. Like if they made a caffeine free one or a low caffeine. Yep. I think it'd be interesting. So, um, oh man, Rachel remembered from a previous live. <laughs> so happens when you pay attention. We call that comprehension. Um, so I, I, I think that's it next Brad tomorrow's topic. We're going to talk about nootropics. 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 Isn't that what I said? And that yeah, was, cool. I was just saying, oh, nootropics. yeah, we're going to talk about those and we'll talk about, um, like supplements and prescription ones. So we'll talk about like modinophil, amphetamine. Modafinil. Yeah. Is that what it is? Modafinil? Modinophil? I'm just pronouncing things weirdly because oh, it's an have, you, have you ever taken either of those? I took one dose of the alpha GPC and I don't know if it was because of the actual, uh, um, like supplement itself or it was just coincidence, but it gave me one of the worst headaches I've ever had in my whole life. <laughs> Funny you should say that. So like I've tried, core or something. I think I've tried all, all of them that I can, that at, at the time, I'm sure there's a ton more now. Uh, I tried a bunch of them even, uh, and, and, you know, tried some of the prescription ones. We'll leave that at that. Um, but uh, they're, they're interesting to say the least. Um, I think a lot of it just has to do with being alert. Like you wake up, like yeah. I'm awake and I can do something cause it's late and I'm studying for school. Um, so t- one of the things Brett, so I think we're done. Would it be, Oh, Kristen wants to know, would it be okay to switch up energy drinks every other day? Or is that not enough of a break? Um, I don't, I wouldn't think that would be enough. Yeah. And one of the things I used to do when I was working at the firehouse all the time, and I mean, we, I drink like two pots of coffee and then have like a, a, an energy drink still. Um, one of the things I used to, yeah, well, was, do you have any adenosine receptors left? I mean, I drink a lot of caffeine, but no, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I, that'd actually be interesting to see on firemen, how at firemen, like night shift nurse workers and, uh, cops and see if they have any see what the damage has been done because i'm sure i mean I, I and i was a light coffee drinker from guys in my firehouse i have a buddy who i don't think he's had any liquids that weren't that weren't alcohol or coffee in 25 years that's impressive yeah i mean that's that's literally if, if it's if the sun's up he has coffee in his hand there might be whiskey in it but he has coffee in his hand and if the sun's down and he's not working there's definitely a beer in his hand it's, it's unbelievable um, but he was one of the CFD calendar guys. So, you know, he's a jacked guy. Yeah. Um, so tomorrow we are next week. We'll start it next week. We are going to be starting giving away prizes for those of you who watch this show. Ooh. Prizes or awards? Awards. <laughs> Definitely awards. awards. We're going to be giving away awards for watching the show. So what we're going to do is we will have a, an, a, a page on our website set up where you go, enter your first name, enter your name, enter your email, and then during, and and let us know. You can even let us know what, um, what. well, nah, we won't go that far. It shows on the same time every day. So you put your name and your email in, and then during the show, we're going to announce a prize, and we're going to announce your name. And then you have five minutes to come in and comment back that you're here. And then you will oh. If you don't win the prize, your name goes right back into the pool. If you do win, you're removed from the pool for a year. So are we, are we just putting everybody's name in there? If yeah, if they if they if they enter their name, okay, they have to enter their name in that. And a then whole year, Jay, that that feels very punishing. A month, fine, a month. Okay, you I was can't like, win again for a month. What if somebody like has a work meeting? You can't win again for no, no, no. If you win, you're removed. If you don't win, you go right back in. Oh, okay. I so thought you meant like if somebody wins, no. but they can't make it. 
No, 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 no. If they rise, they get punished. I was like, that seems a little rude. No, if you win and if we call your name and you don't make it, we'll give you, we'll put you right back into the pool for next time. But if you win a prize, we'll remove you for a month. Okay, that makes sense. You're not eligible. We'll leave you in the pool. You don't have to re-register. We'll just you're ineligible for a month. Um, the only thing we'd have to do is we'll have, been, we'll, have out, we'll have to work out some of the details on that because I'm just thinking if somebody enters today and then in six months if they're not around anymore or they're like I'm not watching every day, which shame on you. We'll have to, we'll have to have some new. So prioritize people. Yeah, quit um, your job so you can watch this every day. Yeah, obviously. Um, and then we will have prizes that we'll have free shirts, free hoodies, free coaching will be one of the prizes. Um, and they were rockets. What? Free rockets? There were no be not be free rockets. Well, there's a, I mean, there's a rocket right there, right, right there. So maybe we'll give them that rocket. But isn't that Liam's rocket? That one's mine. Oh. That one, and then the, the lunar lander Apollo uh, eleven is underneath it. The lunar land, the lem is underneath it. That's awesome. Yeah, those are mine. And that's mission control right there. It was a police station, but I turned I'm it control to major time. Oh, I think we're done. We have a comment. Um oh, actually, we missed one up here. Hold on. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Off subject, however, I'm trying to have more defined abs and staying within my macros. What foods would you suggest to eat or avoid? There's no specific foods that will lead to you showing your abs. Um just Stay within your macros and they will be there. I would say if you have poverty macros or limited macros, choose less energy dense foods, right? So like if you need carbohydrates, I would choose potatoes or veggies or fruit versus or even rice versus like pasta, which like per cup is very carbohydrate dense. Yeah. And then and I would also recommend like let's say you in the morning you wake up, you can see your abs, but by the end of the day, they're gone. Maybe you're going to the beach or something you wanted to show. Maybe the net, maybe a day or two before we go to the beach, we avoid things with some artificial sweeteners to avoid any bloating. <laughs> Same can cause some bloating, so can uh, Splenda. The other option, which is way easier, is just get a Sharpie. I mean, just contour them, right? That's what my, my wife said she could do, my makeup on my abs and just make them pop all the time. Yeah. Jody... Olson Phillips, one of our Macros Inc. coaches, says, with a lot of tension currently in the States, I'm finding a lot of people are getting caught up in emotional eating patterns. What are your top suggestions for combating these emotional eating cycles? Um, get a cat to interrupt your lives. That's, that's <laughs> one. Um, so, you know, I really, I mean, it depends on the emo. If it's really, really emotional eating, I mean, it's outside of the realm of anything that any of us can handle. They they need to seek mental health, a mental health, uh, seek out a mental health professional. But if it's just, um, you know, you're watching the news, you're scrolling through Facebook on social media, you're, you're pacing, you're nervous eating, um, better snacks in your, in your house, I think is the number one. It's easy to say, like Brad said about willpower, not everybody, you just not, try harder is not always possible, but we can plan for failure, right? So if I'm going to fail is if I'm going to go over my food, would you, you know, go, I could go over by a thousand calories or I go over by 300 calories. Um, and, and the bigger thing there is volume of food. So just keep a lot of fruits, vegetables prepared. I, I think one of the bigger things people do is they go buy all these fruits and vegetables and they put them in the fridge and then they just go there and go bad because they, they're not prepared to eat. You need Why are you attacking me like this? Why what? Why are you attacking me like this? Yeah, I do the same thing. Like, <laughs> like if I if I don't, I know me. If I don't buy my lettuce pre-cut, it's never getting cut. Oh my god! I mean, that's it, like I just I just don't do it. It doesn't matter how many times I try. I might do it once, and then for the next five times I buy lettuce, it's not getting cut. Um, you know what's, what's really interesting is like there's kind of just like regular emotional eating and then kind of pathological emotional eating. And what I tell people who just kind of have like, hey, when I've, when it's been like a shitty week, I just go down a whole pizza by myself to feel better, right? Like that's kind of normal emotional eating, right? Mm -hmm. um, what I tell people is be mindful of the process, right? Like usually by the time you get partway through your pizza, you start not feeling that great, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, you generally realize, okay, that didn't really solve the problem. But I try to tell people like, you know, don't try to just solve this problem immediately. Just be more mindful of how you actually feel when you engage in this behavior. And it 
when the behavior is done, if you realize, hey, this didn't really solve the problem, you're probably less likely to continue to go back to it. But be really mindful of how that experience goes. Agreed. So with that being said, uh, June asked where she registered for that. We don't have it set up yet. Once we do, we will email it out to everybody and talk about it in here. Yeah. So with that being said, Brad, I think we're done. All right. Um, yeah, I have very important information that came in on my phone while we were here. Ooh, what is that? Guess what is being delivered today? Your goggles. Oh, man. What are those for? Why would you get those? Uh, because they're awesome. You're turning into a hipster. Is that what I'm hearing? No, I think I'm trying to find a go-kart that I can make street legal and drive around my uh, neighborhood. Like a, like a real, like one of the, like a race go-kart. Yeah. Yeah, those are awesome. My grandparents' neighbor used to have one, and uh, I took it out. I took it out on the street a couple of times and man, those, I mean, it went like 65 miles an hour. Yeah. So I'm trying to find one. My problem is, is I'm too much of a, I have to find the best deal. So I've been looking for forever and haven't found one. That's like exactly yeah. what I want, but I'm going to wear those goggles and like a scarf. A scarf. Yeah. Snoopy. Snoopy. Dude, I'm going to, I'm going to snoopy it so hard. All right. Well, I think that's it, guys. We will be back same time tomorrow. If you have a question we did not get to, make a post in the group, tag Brad Morgan, ask him, and uh, we will be back at the same time tomorrow. Same macro time, same macro place. All right. Have a good one, guys. Take care.